You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah B'Shemesh Israel, 5776-2016. This week, if you're in Chutzlarz, if you're outside of Israel, so the Parsha that will be read is Parsha's Emor. I'd like to share with you a thought, which is based on a profound Medrash, very deep concept, at the very, very beginning of this week's Parsha. It actually quotes a Pasuk, a verse from, the, from last week's Parsha, from the end of Kedoshim, and the verse at the beginning of this week's parsha points out that there's a connection between these two verses. So I'd like to read that to you, and I'd like to share with you this thought. At the end of last week's parsha, the last verse says like this: "V'isha isha, whether a man or a woman, ki bahem oiv mais If they go to a certain type of person who is called an ov or yudoni, which, as the Mephorshim explained, is somebody who is able to see the future, he does certain acts in order to find out the future. So such a person who's trying to find out the future in a way which is employing the kachas atuma, the powers of evil, so such a person has to be killed. It's against the Torah to try to find out the future in a way which isn't in consonance with the Torah, that doesn't use kachas tahara, that doesn't use the powers of good. But even yirgamu aysam demand bam. The Pasuk tells us that such a person has to be stoned to death, their blood is on their own head. It's something that they've caused to themselves, they've done something wrong, which the Torah prohibits, and therefore they must die. Now the verse at the very beginning of our parsha says, Vayim Hashem Amosha, the verse says, Hashem, God, said to Moses, Emar l'koyen b'nei Aaron, speak to the priests, the children of Aaron, v'amarta aleyem l'nefesh lo yitama ba'amov, that they're not permitted to become impure by coming in contact with the dead. So what is the, the connection Every time you have psukim that are next to each other, when you have concepts that are next to each other, there's always some connection between them. Nothing is happenstance in the Torah. Everything is done by chavana, is done with intent. Hashem ordered everything with a certain order. Everything is written in a very specific way. Why are these two psukim, the pasuk which talks about not using divination, not using prohibited means of finding out the future, that verse, why is that placed right next to the verse which speaks about the beginning of the commandments to the kohanim, to the priests? So the Medrash offers a very interesting explanation, which I'd like to share with you. It's based on the explanation of the Eitz Yosef, one of the Mephorshim, on the Medrash. The Medrash points out that there was a time in the future, and the reason that this Pasuk is, is saying it, putting these two verses next to each other, is because it was actually foreshadowing something was, that was going to happen many, many years later after the Torah was given. There would be some event that would occur that would involve both the concept of the Kohanim, the priests, and also the concept of asking about the future, asking for a prophecy from someone who's using Kocha Satuma, who's using the powers of evil. Now the Medrash brings the whole story and gives us a whole explanation. I'm not going to get into every single detail, but I will share with you a few of the details. But first, it's important to understand the story that the Medrash is referring to. Hundreds of years after the Torah was given, right before the Beis Amigdash, before the Temple was built, so there was a great prophet, his name was Samuel, Shmuel Anavi. And Shmuel HaNavi appointed first as the king over the Jewish people for two and a half years was King Saul, Shaul HaMelech. He was the one who was first appointed. He was from the tribe of Binyamin, of Benjamin. And as a result of his not following the command of Hashem, as a result of his not completely killing the nation of Amalek, who represent evil in the world, because of that he lost his malucha. He lost his kingship. And although his children should have continued his kingship, in the end both he and all of his children died. And instead of him, King David, David HaMelech, became the king over the Jewish people. He was from the tribe of Judah, from Yehuda. And indeed, he and his children, and all the way down till today, hopefully soon, Mashiach will come from King David. Now the Navi tells us that King David was already anointed by Shmuel HaNavi, by Samuel, to be the next king, even though Shaul HaMelech, King Saul, was already, was still the king at that time. So Shmuel went, anointed King David, and Shaul, King Saul, was aware of the fact that stuff was happening, that things were changing, that he lost his malucha, that he lost his kingship. However, he didn't accept it. He wasn't willing to accept that. And so the, the psukim, the verses, describe the fact that he was chasing after King David, after David HaMelech, in order to kill him. Because he felt that he was a murid b'malchus, which means that he was rebelling against the king. And a person who, was, who rebels against the king is liable for death. So Shaul HaMelech was running after King David. Now in the process, so not only does he run after King David, but there's a story with the Noiv Irak Koyhanim. 
And let this ring a bell over here that it has to do with the priests, has to do with the Kohanim, which is the subject of our Parsha. That Noivira Kohanim, it was a city of priests, of Kohanim, and they helped out David HaMelech in the process of King David running away from King Saul. So he stopped at the, the city of Nov, the city of Kohanim. And because they helped him, so Shaul HaMelech, King Saul, wiped out the entire city because he felt that they were all Mordim B'Malchus, that they were all rebelling against the king. Our Chazal tell us, our sages say, that as a result of this great sin, as a result of him having abused his power, and killing these many innocent people, these Kohanim, these priests, that sealed his fate and the fate of his children, that they would go into battle and they would die in battle. Now at this point in the story, so Shmuel Hanavi, Samuel, who had anointed King Saul, and had also anointed King David, he had passed away, he was no longer on the scene. Immediately before Shaul HaMelech, King Saul, was about to go out to his final battle, he was looking at the battlefield, he was looking at what was going on. He was used to being able to ask Shmuel Hanavi, Samuel, what to do, and how to proceed, and what was going to be. Shmuel Hanavi had Ruach HaKodesh, he had divine inspiration, he was a prophet. He was able to guide him properly in what was the will of Hashem and what, what he should do. But Shmuel was no longer alive. So what King Saul did was, he searched out throughout the kingdom for a woman or person who was able to be an Oy V'yidayni, Exactly the first verse that we quoted at the beginning of our podcast. Somebody who is able to use divination, use the kachas atuma, use the powers of evil, in order to find out the future, in order to find out what was going to be with this particular battle. How he was to go about it, what was going to be the results of this battle. Now it wasn't very easy, our Chazal tell us, to find somebody like this, because Shaul HaMelech, King Saul, because the Torah says that such a person is forbidden, it's forbidden to behave in this way, to use divination, to find out the future, using kachas atuma, using the powers of evil, because that's forbidden by the Torah. So he made sure to eliminate any such people. You couldn't find, it was very difficult to find a person who was able to use the kachas atuma, to use the powers of evil, in order to find out the future. But for whatever reason, at this point, King Saul decided that he needed to find a person like this in order to find out the future, in order to know how to proceed in battle. And he did indeed find a woman that was able to use her powers, her kochas atuma, in order to call up spirits to find out the future. When Shoah HaMelech came to this woman, he was accompanied by two of his generals, but they dressed themselves down. Not everybody knows, there was no media in those times, not everybody even knew what the king looked like. So he dressed himself down, he dressed in very simple clothing, he came with these two generals to accompany him, and he came to this woman and asked her to contact the spirits. And specifically he asked that she bring back, bring up the spirit of Shmuel HaNavi, of Samuel the prophet, in order for him to be able to ask Shmuel HaNavi what was going to be, what was going to happen in this in this upcoming battle, what he was to do, how he was to proceed. Now the Pesuk and the verses tell us that when the spirit came up, when Shmuel HaNavi came up, so naturally he would come up from the ground because his body had been buried in the ground and there are certain aspects of the soul which are still connected to the physical body. So when that soul came up from the ground, usually when a spirit would come up, it would come up feet first. However, Shmuel Hanavi, Samuel's spirit came up head first in honor of King Saul, in honor of Shaul HaMelech. When the woman saw that this is what happened, she was able to see, as our Chazal say, she was able to actually see the spirit. Whereas Shaul HaMelech, who was the one that was asking for the spirit to be brought up, he was able to hear the words of Shmuel Hanavi of Samuel. When she saw Shmuel Hanavi, that his soul came up from the earth, he saw, she saw this vision of Shmuel Hanavi, of Samuel, so he came up head first, she immediately recognized that the reason that he came up head first was in honor of Shaul HaMelech, in honor of Saul. And she was really upset by this whole thing, because she knew that Shaul HaMelech was sending out shluchim, messengers, in order to destroy anybody who was doing these kind of things, in order to uproot this practice which involved the Kachas the powers of evil. Shaul HaMelech reassured this woman that nothing would happen to her as a result of her helping him. But he had a conversation then with Shmuel HaNavi, with Samuel. Shmuel HaNavi, the soul of Shmuel HaNavi was very upset that he had been disturbed and brought back from the, from the world of the spirit. And when he was asked by Shaul HaMelech, what's going to be with this battle? What's going to be the outcome of the battle? Shmuel HaNavi tells him that tomorrow, Machar Ataimi, tomorrow you're going to be with me. 
Interesting, very interesting uh, way of phrasing it. Tomorrow he's going to be with me. Simple understanding means that Shmuel was telling him that tomorrow you're going to die in battle and you're going to join me in the realm of the spirit, you're going to move past the physical realm, you're going to pass on from this world and enter into the realm of the dead where all of those who have lived, all of their neshamas, their spirits reside. And not only would Shaul and Melech Saul pass on from the world in this battle, but also his sons, all of his children, his boys, who would have been the heirs to the throne, they would also die in battle. And despite the fact that Shaul was shocked and disturbed by this information, he still went out to lead the Jewish people. Amazing tzidkus, amazing righteousness of Shaul HaMelech, that he went out to lead the Jewish people in battle, stood up for the Jewish people, even though he knew that he was going to lose his life. That's the outline of the story. And I wanted to share with you first the outline before we get into a few of the details which the Medrash brings out, which, which it expands upon. And, and these details, when we read them, it seems very difficult to understand. But there's the Yesod, an amazing fundamental idea that we see here, which is very powerful. And we need to understand that Shaul HaMelech, King Saul, was the first of the kings of the Jewish people. Which means that we're talking about somebody who is an amazingly righteous individual. He was somebody who, despite all of his faults, despite the things that he did wrong, despite the mistakes that he made, he was a, a, an amazing person. He was an amazing righteous person. He was an amazing spiritual giant. So when we read what the measure says about him, and we read the story about him, we need to take that into account and try to understand what was going on here. Why was he doing this? And why is the description of him, despite all of it, that he is somebody who is indeed a great righteous person, who is a great tzaddik. So keep that in mind as we learn together, as we look together at these different points of the Medrash. The first point I want to share is that the Medrash tells us that when he went to the Oiv Yadani, he went looking for this woman, really he made a mistake. He shouldn't have done this, of course. It's forbidden by the Torah. And he should have instead gone to the Urim Vitumim. That was a special oracle which was on the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol, of the high priest, and it enabled a person to be able to ask questions of God. The person who had Ruach HaKodesh, they had divine inspiration, they were able to look at the stones on the breastplate, and the stones for them, they would see them lighting up, and they would form letters that would form the answer that Hashem wanted to give to whatever question was affecting you. The king or the nation of the Jewish people, specific questions were permitted to be asked of the Urim Vatumim. And so the Medjid points out that really Shaul HaMelech made a mistake that he shouldn't have gone, of course, to the Oiv Yudayim. He rather should have asked the Urm Vatumim. He should have asked that which was permitted, that which was working with the Koychus of Tahara, the powers of purity, not with the powers of evil. Another very interesting thing that we see is that it says, as we described, he took off his royal clothing and he put on simple clothing so that he not be recognized. Measures tells us that that actually signified the fact that he was about to lose his royalty. Now this is very interesting, because in a certain sense, when a person does an action, the things that they do, the things that I do, the clothes that I wear, the different things that surround me, that are involved with me, that are, are happening in my life, they are a manifestation of something that's going on on a spiritual level. So Shol HaMelech, in a certain sense, he was acting with a certain Ruach HaKodesh. He was doing something which represented something that was about to happen to him, which was that he was about to lose the Malucha because he was going to pass on from the world, and it was going to go to David HaMelech. So it's very interesting that even though he was doing something wrong, still the very actions that he did had a certain level of Ruach HaKodesh, had a certain level of divine inspiration, and represented something that was going to happen in his life, and in a very strong way. So this is the first example that we see that he's making a mistake, he's doing something wrong, but at the same time, there is something that, he, because he's a spiritual giant, because he's such a great person, the actions that he does involve a certain level of Ruach HaKodesh, of divine inspiration. Another point the Medrash makes is that when Shaul HaMelech, we said that he went with his two generals, this was something that he did, which he had learned actually from Avram Avinu, from Abraham, when Avram went to Haram Moriah, to Mount Moriah, in order to sacrifice his son Yitzhak, Isaac, the Torah tells us that he took two people with him. He took two of his servants. One was Yishmael, and one was Elazar. He took these two people with him. So we see that a great person, when he goes to do something which is important, which is significant, so he brings with him two people. Shoah HaMelech also did this. So, interesting, again, even though he's going to do something which is an aver, which is a mistake, which is wrong, 
Nevertheless, the, the Medrash is pointing out that he's doing something good at the same time. He's doing something appropriate. He's an example that we are to follow and we're going to do something which is, has great significance. Shol HaMelech is going to ask something which is going to affect the nation. What's going to be with this battle? When we're doing something of great significance, so we need to take people with us. We need to take people along with us, just like Abraham. So Shol is an example for us. Despite the fact that he's doing something wrong, he's still an example in, in the good things that he's doing, in the right things that he's doing. Another amazing example of this paradox where Shaul HaMelech is this amazing individual spiritually, but he's making a mistake, just like this contrast. The, the Medrash tells us that when Shaul HaMelech went to ask this woman, so clearly he was doing something wrong, but at the same time, when he assures her, when he reassures her that nothing is going to happen to her, he says, Chai Hashem im He says, I swear to God, that nothing will happen to you because of this matter. That nothing bad is going to happen to you. You will not be damaged as a result of your helping me. So he uses Hashem's name, even though he's doing something which is against the Torah, which is against Hashem. Still, he has such a, he's such a great person. He's still, the, the way that he was used to speaking, you know, the way that he spoke to her, was consistently involving Hashem's name. The Medrash compares this to a woman who is being mezana, chas v'shalom, heaven forbid, a woman who is being unfaithful to her husband, but nevertheless, even when she's unfaithful to her husband and she's with another man, she's, she really loves her own husband. And she's thinking about her husband at the same time as she's with a different man. So in the same way, Shaul HaMelech was being unfaithful to God. And yet, he still mentions God even in that place where he's being unfaithful. Medrash tells us another point, which is also amazing, very interesting. It says that, and this is based on the Etz Yosef's explanation, it says that Shmuel Hanavi, Samuel the prophet, this woman brought up his spirit. Etz Yosef explains that ordinarily, when a woman like this would do her divinations, when she would do her magic, so to speak, so the spirit that would come up would not be the actual person's spirit, certainly not the spirit of someone who's as great as Shmuel Hanavi of Samuel, but rather it would be some kind of intermediary spirit who would communicate with the higher realms, bring back information to whichever person was asking for the information, but it wouldn't be a direct communication between a great spirit and this world. However, Hashem Himself intervened here and actually allowed and brought down the spirit of Shmuel Hanavi from this very high place, and told Shmuel to come down and facilitated that Shmuel would actually be the one communicating with Shaul HaMelech, with King Saul, and it wouldn't be an intermediary spirit that would be bringing the information back and forth. Now this is something amazing if you think about it, because Shaul HaMelech, King Saul, is doing something very wrong. He's, he's rebelling against God. And yet, even in that rebellion, Hashem is saying, you know what, you're going to ask for something, I'm going to make sure that you get what you really need, and you really need the truth. Because intermediary spirits and all these kinds of things, they can lie. They can say things that aren't really true. They can change the facts. But Hashem cared about Shaul HaMel. He wanted him to hear the actual truth. And even though Shaul did something wrong, he, asked the, he didn't ask the Urva Tumim. He came and tried to use Kachas HaTumim. But Hashem organized things such that despite that, he would be able to access true information. And he would be able to speak directly to Shmuel HaNavi, to, to Samuel the prophet, and find out what was going to happen. So that's a remarkable thing. It's an unbelievable thing. We need to understand what is going on. What is the teaching here of this Medjish? What is, what is the reason, indeed, why Hashem would facilitate such a thing if indeed Shaul HaMelech is, is going so, he's doing such a, an act which is incorrect. In fact, the Medjish later on says that there were five different mistakes, sins, that Shaul did that caused him to have to die. The main mistake was Noivir HaKohanim. As we mentioned, it was the mistake of killing the city of, of priests. But one of the mistakes that caused his death was indeed the fact that he came against the Torah. He came to this woman to ask her advice, to ask her help. But despite the fact that this was a mistake and it was something wrong, Hashem still facilitated and responded to Shalomel, to King Saul. So you need to understand what's the pshat in that. Why is that indeed? Now, there's another point that the Medrash tells us. Two more points I'm going to share. The first of those two is that when Shaul HaMelech didn't kill Agag, he didn't kill Aramalek, he didn't complete the act of destroying evil in the world. Shmuel HaNavi told him, Samuel told him, that because you didn't fulfill the word of Hashem, you have lost the Malucha, you've lost your kingship. And Hashem is going to give it to somebody else, to your friend who is better than you. And he was referring to King David, to David HaMelech. And he referred to him as someone who is better than him. In this conversation, however, 
in the conversation where Shoal is speaking to Shmuel's spirit, and Shmuel is in the Olam HaEmes, so to speak. He's in that place, the realm of the spirits, where they only see the truth. So Shmuel didn't say to him, your friend who is better than you. But rather, he just said to him, Vayitna l'reach David. He said that Hashem has given the malucha, the kingship, to your contemporary, which is David. And he did not refer to him as someone who is better than him. So the Medrash explains, as the Yosef explains the Medrash, that when Shmuel Hanavi, when Samuel the prophet was alive, so he said a hagzama, he said an exaggeration, when he said that King David was greater than Shaul. Because the actual truth is, and the actual truth was, that Shaul HaMelech was on a greater level of tzitkus, on a greater level of righteousness than King David was. Even though, of course, David was an amazing, righteous individual, Shaul was on a higher level. So when Shmuel HaNavi, when Samuel originally said that it's going to go to somebody who's greater than you, it wasn't really true. But when Shmuel HaNavi was in the Olam HaEmes already, when he was just a spirit and he was, he was dwelling in that realm of the spirit where everything is clear and true, he said it very straight that Hashem has given your kingship to your contemporary, which is David. And he didn't say anything about that David was greater than him. So it's very interesting, within the conversation, which is happening, which has been facilitated in a way which involves Koychas Atoma, the powers of evil, he's doing something wrong, he's doing an Avera. Nevertheless, Shol HaMelech is still told, and, and specifically now is told, that he is actually greater than King David, not like it was originally told to him. Remarkable. Last point that the Medrash tells us, and we mentioned this before, is that Shol HaMelech is told, King Saul is told, that this is to be his final battle. And he's going to go out there, and he and his sons will all die in this battle because of their avarice, because of the fact that he killed out the city of Novi Rak, Kohanim, of the priests. Despite the fact that he knew that he and his sons would all go out to battle and they would all die, he didn't even tell his two generals who had come with him, who weren't privy to the conversation that he was having with Samuel the prophet, he didn't tell them what was going on. He just told them that we're going out to battle, everything's going to be great. He didn't tell them, he didn't want to weaken their resolve, weaken their hearts. He went out into battle bravely, he brought his sons along with him, even though he knew this was to be his final battle. And that's a king of the Jewish people, that's a righteous king of the Jewish people, that despite the fact that he knew that he was going to die because of his sins, his righteousness demanded of him, his greatness demanded of him, that he lead his people, he lead them out to battle, even though it was a losing battle, he lead them out, he stand in front of them, and he stand as a great person, as a great righteous person, to lead his people. The Medjish points out that he could have ran away, he could have escaped the verdict of heaven by not going out to battle the following day, but nevertheless, he did the right thing, he did what was incumbent upon him as a leader of the Jewish people because of his greatness and because of his righteousness. The Medrash finishes off in explanation of these two verses that we started off with and the fact that the Torah placed them next to each other. Amr Yeshua the Sichni Meshim Rabbi Levi. Yeshua of Sichni said the name of Rabbi Levi. Milamit Shero Kadosh Baruch Hu Lemoisha Dor Dor Veshayftov. This teaches us that Hashem, when Moshe Rabbeinu had some kind of vision from Hashem, Moshe was shown each generation and its judges and its kings and its wise people and its leaders. He was able to see it to the future, see all that would happen to the Jewish people. Hashem showed him that there was going to be a, a king, the first king of the Jewish people. He, he and his sons were going to fall and they were going to die in battle. Amar Lefanov. So Moshe Rabbeinu says to Hashem, Moses says to God, Can it be that the first king of the Jewish people, the first aspect is always the, the, the most powerful aspect. That first king is going to fall on his sword. He's going to die as a result of going out to battle. How could it be? God responded to him and said, You're, you're saying this to me? Don't talk to me. Speak to the priests, Shaharag that King Saul killed, that they are accusing him, that they are bringing out an accusation against King Saul, and as a result of the fact that he spilled their blood, so his blood will also be spilled. So these two verses are placed next to each other, the Medrash is saying. The verse which has to do with the Ovi Yudoni, which has to do with asking of these powers of evil in order to find out the future, that is a reference, a veiled reference to King Saul, to the mistake that he was going to make in the future. And it's a result, that mistake and his death was going to be a result of this Pasuk, this, the beginning of our Parsha, which speaks of Amor Lakanim, which speaks of the priests who he would kill. Now in reading this Medrash, 
I would like to offer an explanation which really is an amazing and deep idea if we think about it. And that is that this Pasuk, the, the way the Medrash paints the picture is that we have a person, a human being who's an amazing spiritual individual and he makes mistakes. He does things which are wrong. And in fact, the Mephoshim explained that the Misa, the death that he was going to go through, that he and his sons would go through, would be a kapara. There would be an atonement for his mistake of killing the city of Nev Irakoyanim, of the priests. So, in a certain sense, because of his righteousness, because he was held to a great standard, so he would have to die. But that death would be a tikkun, would be a rectification for his mistakes. We see that throughout this medrash, that the things that he's done wrong, the things that he's making mistakes in, despite the fact that they are mistakes, the overarching theme is that Shalom El King Saul was a great individual. He was a tzaddik. He was a righteous individual. And because of that, his righteousness was what caused him to be anointed, to be appointed as the first king of the Jewish people. And he was, it was not a mistake that he was appointed. It was appropriate that he be such a king. But his mistakes were too great. And because of those mistakes, he would die. But within those mistakes, despite those mistakes, his overarching theme of who he was, was Sitkus, was righteousness. That's expressed in each of these different concepts that we see. He was somebody who was bringing, he was going to Allah, he was bringing two people with him to do something which would affect the Jewish people. He was somebody who, even though he was doing an Avera, he was doing something wrong, he was still thinking about God, he was still mentioning God. And even though he was doing something wrong, Hashem was still making sure that he should have a real revelation and see the truth. In a certain way, he was even greater than David HaMelech. That was attested to by Shmuel and Avi himself, by Samuel himself. He took back his original statement. And we see his greatness, that he's willing to go out to battle even though he's, he knows he's going to lose his life. And I think that the teaching here is, or what this says to me, is that when you have somebody who's a great person, and it is our job to strive to be that great person. When somebody is great, when someone's focus and their drive in life is to be a good person, to do what's right, to do God's will, that's their focus, that's their desire, Hashem takes the things that are not as good, the mistakes that He makes. And Hashem, in those mistakes, makes a rectification for the mistakes that are being made, even as they're being made. And I would like to explain that when Moshe Rabbein, when Moses says to God, is this what happens to the first king of the Jewish people? Is this his end? How could it be? And Hashem says to him, well listen, it's because he killed the, the Kohanim. It's because he killed the priests. I would like to say that there's an even deeper thing that Hashem is responding to Moshe. Hashem is saying to him, look who is the first king of the Jewish people. He is somebody who is willing to give up his life. He's willing to walk into battle. He's willing to recognize his mistakes and recognize that, that there are consequences for his mistakes. And those consequences are rectification for him. See the greatness of the first king of the Jewish people. Even see that he's going to an Ivy Adani, he's going to find out from the Kaikas Atuma the powers of impurity, but see that I am still there, I am still responding to him through Shmuel Hanavi, I'm still making things turn, making the wheels turn so that despite his mistakes, the fact that he is a great person, that he's a tzaddik, that he's righteous, that stands for him in a much greater way throughout the story. Hashem was showing him this whole story. The wrap-up of this idea is that we need to understand that the king of the Jewish people represents the entire Jewish people. And so each of us, in our way and at our level, also are like Shaul HaMelech, like King Saul. We are trying to serve Hashem. We are striving to be greater people. We are trying to live a spiritual life. And sometimes we make mistakes. But if Hashem sees that the overarching theme of our lives is goodness, is greatness, is spirituality, so then we can receive something just like Shaul HaMelech, just like King Saul. We can also, Hashem can take the mistakes that we've made and He can help us to rectify those mistakes if our focus is indeed like Shaul HaMelech on greatness, on serving Hashem. And I want to bless you and please bless me back that Hashem should help us to, to see the imperfection of a King Shaul and recognize that that's true of ourselves. Hashem should help us to be able to, despite those imperfections, Hashem should help us to be great people, to strive to be great, such that whenever we have done things wrong, whenever we've made mistakes, Hashem should turn around our mistakes and allow even the mistakes to be a rectification for us and for all the Jewish people. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. 
This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.